Uh, Ron Paul is planning to turn his final campaign push uh, in Iowa into a family affair. His son, the senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul, will be at his side for a whistle-stop tour to five Iowa cities on Monday. Ron Paul is in Iowa today, but he's taking a break from his campaigning this uh, New Year's weekend, a risky move, I should say, in the last critical days before the caucuses. He's been struggling to deal with some tougher scrutiny, including questions about racist newsletters written under his name decades ago. Our political uh, reporter Peter Habby is joining us now from Iowa. You've been looking specifically, Peter, at a 1987 book by Ron Paul. Yeah, that's right, Wolf. This book was written under Ron Paul's name uh, in 1987, right before he ran for president uh, under the Libertarian Party banner. And, you know, unlike those newsletters, letters, which he has been able to distance himself from, this book, you know, was written by Ron Paul. And there are several passages in there that are sort of, uh, you know, uh, of questionable taste or uh, sort of inflammatory that might hurt him. Uh, l let me read to you a couple of these uh, passages that are in this book, which is called Freedom Under Siege. Uh, the first one uh, is about sexual harassment. Ron Paul writes, quote, employee rights are said to be valid when employers pressure employees into sexual activity. Why don't they quit once the so-called harassment starts? Uh, and, and another passage that I found in this book when I was reading through it over the last few days was, every year new groups organize uh, excuse me, organize uh, to demand their rights. White people who organize and expect the same attention as other groups are quickly and viciously condemned as dangerous bigots. Hispanic, black, and Jewish caucuses can exist in the U.S. Congress, but not a white caucus, demonstrating the absurdity of this approach for achieving rights for everyone. So, again, Ron Paul's uh, hardcore libertarian views, coming back to haunt him a little bit, again, these are not sort of outside mainstream libertarian thinking. A lot of the book hits on Ron Paul's uh, familiar themes about the gold standard, protecting gun rights, and basically personal liberty, and that's what he's writing about. But, you know, amid this whole newsletter flap, this book has escaped scrutiny, but, you know, now he uh, might have to answer for this in the next few days before the caucuses, Wolf. You spent a lot of time in Iowa, spent a lot of time in New Hampshire, South Carolina. How is this likely to impact him? Well, I don't think it'll hurt him here in Iowa where he's doing well and his supporters are so devoted uh, and frankly agree with a lot of his positions. The problem for him, uh, which has been the problem for him this whole campaign, is most Republican voters don't view him as palatable. Uh, nationally, only about 6%, according to our recent poll, uh, think that he can beat Barack Obama next November. It might hurt him in New Hampshire, where someone like John Huntsman is competing for independent voters against Ron Paul. So if you throw these quotes back at him, basically saying, if you're a victim of sexual harassment, you might as well quit uh, your job, that might turn off some independent voters. And again, it feeds this narrative that Ron Paul is sort of out of step with not just Republicans, but also independents. As much as Ron Paul has tried to graft uh, you know, this idea that his views on debt and spending are in line with today's Republican Party. This reinforces a narrative that, quite frankly, his views are not. Uh, so it's problematic for him on a national level, Wolf. Peter Hamby uh, reporting for us from Iowa. Thanks, Peter.